Over the past few years, more and more content has started to be produced in HDR or high dynamic range. But you might have noticed that most of the HDR content out there is being produced by the big studios and not so much by independent creators on YouTube and other platforms. And the reason for this is that HDR production is a lot more complicated than you might think. It's not like the switch from 1080p to 4K, where the process is basically the same, just with more pixels. Working in HDR requires a different approach to post-production, particularly in the realm of color grading. Right now, the biggest obstacle to producing more content in HDR is the fact that most people don't have a screen which can display an HDR image accurately enough to give them a good idea of what they're looking at. Professional grade HDR mastering displays can cost thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars, which means they're completely out of the question for most people. But what if I told you it was possible to create a good looking HDR video using your existing SDR monitor? Well, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through a workflow I've developed which will allow you to do just that. I'll explain the principles behind it, and then I'll do a tutorial showing you the exact steps. I recommend watching my previous video about HDR before this one, because I'll be assuming you're already familiar with what HDR is and how it works. I'll also leave timestamps in the description down below if you want to skip right to the tutorial portion. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's make some HDR content. If you watched my previous video about HDR, you'll remember that I said you need an HDR capable display in order to create HDR content. Well, I wasn't lying. For true professional HDR grading, you do need an HDR mastering display. This workflow is not the correct way of doing things. It simply allows you to approximate a true HDR image on an SDR display. If you're working for a paying client who expects a professional HDR master, I would strongly advise you to do things the correct way and use an HDR mastering display. However, if absolute accuracy isn't a high priority, then stick around. This workflow may not be technically correct, but it does work. And with that out of the way, let's talk about what you'll need to use this workflow. The first thing you'll need is footage which was captured in an HDR format. You can't just convert iPhone footage into HDR. You will still need to capture using a professional camera system. Your footage should be captured using a log or HLG gamma curve. This is very important for reasons I'll explain later. You cannot use a normal Rec. 709 profile. You need to shoot in log or HLG. Your footage should also have a wide color gamut, which usually goes along with log or HLG formats by default. Finally, you'll want to capture in at least 10 bits per channel. While it is possible to work with 8-bit footage, it will lead to increased color banding compared to 10 or 12-bit footage. Now that you have your footage, you'll need to download DaVinci Resolve. This workflow will not work in other editing software like Premiere or Final Cut, at least not without some modification. Thankfully, DaVinci Resolve is free to download. You do not need the paid studio version to use this workflow. It does come with some creature comforts that make your life a little easier when working in HDR, but it is actually not a requirement. I'll be working in the free version for the purposes of this tutorial. Finally, you'll need to download Wesley Knapp's HDR Metajector tool, which I'll have linked in the description down below. Now that all that's out of the way, let's talk about how we're going to grade in HDR on an SDR display. The short version is, we'll be using ASUS to automatically transform our log footage into an HDR format. We'll use a Rec. 709 output transform to monitor our grade, then we will switch the output transform to Rec. 2020 HDR for our final export. <laughs> now, if you don't know what any of that means, don't worry. I'll do my best to explain the basics, but feel free to skip to the actual tutorial portion later on if you don't want to get into the actual technical details. The reason this workflow works is because when you shoot in log, HLG, or RAW, you're actually capturing all of the information you need for an HDR image. As I discussed in my video about gamma curves, 
A log profile takes a high dynamic range signal from the sensor and applies a logarithmic curve to make it all fit within an SDR container. Since these curves are standardized, we can reverse the log curve and retrieve the original HDR signal captured by the sensor. These highlights are clipping because their true value is above 100 nits. They're up in the HDR range, so we can't display them correctly on an SDR monitor. If we used an HDR display, we could see the full dynamic range of this image. There is, however, one trick we can use to see what's happening in the highlights without losing the full HDR information. We can use a process called tone mapping to curve off the values up in the HDR range such that they can all be displayed on an SDR monitor. Now, we do lose the true contrast and tonality of the HDR version, but we at least have a good idea of what these highlights look like. If we were to export the image after putting it through the tone mapping, we would lose the HDR information and we'd be effectively left with an SDR image. However, in Resolve, we can actually make corrections to our image in between the log conversion and the tone mapping. So, we transform our log image into HDR, apply our color grade, then apply the tone mapping so that we can see what we're working with on an SDR display. Then, we simply disable the tone mapping and export the graded HDR image. Now, doing this process by hand on every shot would be a huge pain. Thankfully, by using a tool called ASUS, we can make this process much simpler. ASUS is a big topic that deserves its own video, but all you need to know for the purposes of this tutorial is that ASUS will allow us to convert our log footage, grade it, and then output it as either HDR or SDR. Now, let me show you how to use this workflow for yourself. Once you've downloaded DaVinci Resolve, open it and create a new project. You can either edit your project within Resolve directly, or you can do your editing in another program like Premiere or Final Cut, and then import your timeline into Resolve. Either way, I'm going to assume you've already assembled your project and are ready to begin the color grading process. First, we're gonna open up the project settings, and we're gonna to go to the color management tab. We're going to tell Resolve that we want to use ACES for our color grading. So select the color science dropdown and select ACES CCT. Now we need to tell Resolve what gamma curve was used for each of the clips in our project. So let's go to the media tab here and we can see I have a bunch of Sony footage here and this was all shot in S-Log2. So I'm just gonna select all of this, right click, Select ACES Input Transform. We've got a bunch of different options here for different settings. And we're gonna select Sony S-Log2. Now we also have some GoPro footage in here too. So for that, I'm going to select the ACES Input Transform as Rec. 709. Once you've gone through your project and selected the appropriate ACES Input Transform for each of your clips, you'll notice that everything in your project now looks really messed up. And don't worry, that's normal. The reason is we're looking at the linear HDR signal, which can't be displayed correctly on our SDR monitor. As I discussed before, we're going to enable tone mapping to automatically convert the HDR signal into SDR for our monitor to display. So we're going to go back up into File, Project Settings, and Color Management, and we're going to select an ASUS Output Device Transform. This is going to tell Resolve how to map the HDR signal onto our current display. So we're gonna select, go down and we're gonna select Rec. 709 because that's what we can actually monitor. Now when we look at our timeline, we can see that everything looks pretty normal. If it doesn't, make sure you've gone through and assigned all of your ACES input transforms correctly. Now that we have our transform set up, we're free to grade the image however we want. We should know though that if you're used to grading in Rec. 709, the different grading tools might not behave the way you're used to. The reason is you're applying the corrections to the linear HDR signal, which is then being converted into SDR, as opposed to just grading in SDR directly. If you're having trouble grading, I recommend switching from the primaries wheels over to the log wheels, because these are calibrated to work in the ACES environment. We can use offset to control our exposure, highlights to control our highlights, Midtones to control our midtones, and shadows to control our shadows, exactly as you'd expect. 
Once you have your image looking the way you want it, it's time to get ready for export. If we exported the project as is, the output would have the Rec. 709 tone mapping baked in, and it would effectively be an SDR image like we have right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into color management, and we're going to switch our output device transform into an HDR format. So in this case, I'm going to choose Rec. 2020 ST2084 1000 nits. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. What this will do is effectively disable the tone mapping and output the image as an HDR signal instead of an SDR one. Now this won't look right on our SDR monitor, but that's okay. We monitored the SDR version of this image as we were grading. So we know that when we display this HDR image on an HDR monitor, it'll look pretty close to the way the SDR version we saw before looked. Now it's time to export our finished file. We can't use normal H.264 for this, because that's an 8-bit container. We're going to change the output format to QuickTime, DNxHR, DNxHR HQX 10-bit. This will be able to properly store the HDR signal. Now we can select whatever file name we want, add to render queue, and start render. Once the render is complete, we still aren't done. If we're uploading to YouTube, we still need to give YouTube the necessary metadata to tell it how to properly display this image. YouTube doesn't know that this file contains an HDR signal unless we tell it so. We're going to use Wesley Knapp's HDR Metajector tool, which I've attached in the description down below. This tool will allow us to attach the appropriate metadata to our file so YouTube knows to interpret it as an HDR video. So we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop our file here. Press enter, and now we're going to choose an output file name. So in this case, I just choose the same thing, but with injected on the end. Next, we need to attach a LUT for the SDR down conversion. If we upload an HDR file, YouTube still needs to create an SDR version to show to those without HDR screens. We can choose to let YouTube handle this process automatically, but in my experience, it doesn't really do a good job. I've attached a LUT along with the Metajector tool, which will apply the same Rec. 709 tone mapping we used earlier during grading. If we apply this LUT to the video, the output should look identical to the SDR version we saw before while we were grading. So we're going to give this LUT to YouTube to tell it how to create the SDR version of our video. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Y here and drag and drop in the LUT. All right. Now we just let the Metajector run. Once the Metajector is finished running, we should have a file which is ready to upload to YouTube. If you want to see an example of this workflow in action, go watch the HDR re-upload of my HDR Explained episode. That video was created and uploaded using this workflow, so you can go see the end results for yourself. So, like I said before, this workflow is not the technically correct way of doing things, but it does work. And once you're used to grading an ASUS, you can export your video as either SDR or HDR just by changing one setting. Special thanks to Wesley Knapp, who wrote a blog about his own HDR workflow back in 2017, and also created the Metajector tool used in this video. His article was incredibly helpful in creating my own HDR workflow, so if you're interested, definitely check it out if you want to see another approach. Anyway, my name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.